Hi guys, welcome back. Last video you saw me was doing the coil I was on the loop hole. Now, I've got another thing to do. I'm really happy with how it looks already. And I know this is going to be a bit of a questionable modification because some people will really like it and some people will hate it. So I've seen this making its way around the internet and I couldn't say no because I like LEDs and shiny things. So I have bought myself a fiber optic starlight roof. I'm going to do a starlight roof liner inside of a Lupo. Uh, it should look pretty good in my opinion. Like I said, some people will absolutely hate this. Um, but I'm going to give it a go, see how it turns out. If it looks terrible, you know not to do it to your own car. So I've taken off this trim uh, to gain access to the inside of the, the panel. Now, what I'm hoping to do is run the fiber optic cable so that the little control box into here and the fiber optic cable I want to run up here through the inside and there's a little hole I don't know whether you'll see it actually uh, can you see it? probably not when the roof line is off you'll see it better there's a hole in that corner so I'm hoping to get them up there and then run them to the roof so the control box will actually sit behind here because there's loads of space in there for mounting um, I mean if this doesn't work once again I'll have to find some other way of doing it and you'll know to learn from my mistakes but first things first I need to get this roof liner out and test fit the cables so I've just started taking the uh, the grab handles off um, and this is the the actual mechanics itself with the little bluetooth reader on it but there is enough room to slide it down there and you can twist it at the bottom there's enough room to like twist it so I can connect the fiber optics to it so it'll sit completely out of the way that's why I wanted the bluetooth one I paid the extra for the bluetooth so I could connect it to my phone rather than have to keep messing in there to or aiming a red thing or drilling a hole or anything like that so this is where I'm up to, I've removed all the front um, I need to try and get these out though I believe these come out, I'm not too sure um, this is all new for me, so these ones, I'm having a real pain, I don't know whether they do come out or not, but I'm having a right pain with them. Right, so, I found there are two screws, and the way I found that I could do it, was to slide a pick inside, and gently lever this part toward me, so I can get a better shot at that. And when you pry that away from you, the top comes off, and then you've got the two screws. So then four have to come out for me to get the roof liner down. So now the front is loose. I've been told I can work my way along, pulling it down. And then apparently when I get just over a foot, I've got to pull it forward to release the back clips. And then it should slide towards the windscreen and come out. There we go. Oh, well, it's out. So, change of plan. Uh, I'm actually going to go through this hole here and straight down. will feed straight down to here so my plan was successful this now roots into there I've left the packing on to keep some protection for it and this now pulls through here so I've got a lot of cable in the roof that I can now freely pull through and route to the headliner well now that all comes up to there now is the tedious part of separating these all out putting the headliner at sort of as low as I can get it I guess so like I might have to put the, put it on here feed these across stab the holes through each one and then you push it all the way through pull it through 
glue the top of it where you want it and then snip it off and this is going to be a very long process so I'm probably not going to film all this I might film one and then just go through the whole thing because I've got 400 to do before it goes dark just to quickly show you the module um, basically there's just this one little grub screw that holds it in so this it has a little ridge here and that grub screw just sits in the ridge so when that goes in there and you tighten up that screw it just stops it from coming back out um, obviously it wasn't tight then but if I finger tighten it it just grips onto them cables and then just holds it in there so just tighten that screw up as tight as you can get it really um, so that the cables don't fall out when you put them behind the door card right so I'm just going to do a quick demonstration of one so you can see what I've got to do you use one little pick a little pick tool like so and then you want to stab a hole in your roof liner that should come through the other side yeah just about there it is then you take the pick and you take one single micro um, optical cable push that through pull it and that's one in place just there then what you want to do is put a blob of hot glue on there and snip that level with the roof liner and then do that to 400 more here we go as you can see they're starting to come through now so all I'm doing if I can get it to focus on these tiny little things is just blobbing a bit of hot glue on the back of them to stop them just falling out once I've got them off because obviously the only thing that's going to hold these in it's not going to have a long strand on there it'll just have a tiny dot that pokes through so they need to be fixed in place. This is a long job, you could have a lot of patience. So while I'm doing this, um, I want to know what you guys have done to your Lupos that people sort of hate on and what people have their own opinions on. Um, because I've noticed it more and more in car culture and a lot of people have, obviously Car culture started realistically from wanting to stand out and have a vehicle that was different and not conform to what society thinks you should drive. Um, hence why the Japanese car culture is so popular because their vehicles are just so different. They're, they're doing things that no other country really is pushing that boundary um, as much as Japan. Now, I've been criticised for some of the things that I've done to my cars because apparently, you know, it, it's not right or it doesn't look good or, you know, it's not what I would drive. Well, okay, that's fine, but you don't have to drive the car. I do. Now, I'm 100% in agreement that everyone's entitled to their own opinion, but to beat people down and sort of make... Um, sort of hurried remarks about people's pride and joys that people have probably spent a lot of time and a lot of money doing um, is not right. Now, like I said, I'm not one of these people that can't allow people to have an opinion. I, like I said, I, I firmly believe that everybody, oh dear, I believe everyone is entitled to an opinion. As I said before, it's not that I don't think people should say negative things or I can't take opinions but there's ways of wording things to not like destroy a person's day um, because I know a lot of people that use cars as a coping method me included um, I use it as a coping method with depression so you know if people are having a really bad day and they post something that they're really proud of and that one person goes out of their way to make that a negative comment it can completely destroy a person's day and it may just be as simple as a remark of like oh it's trash or whatever like just toxic comments that like obviously I, i'm not gonna get into it as deep as i want to really 
if people can only go as far as to sort of make toxic remarks about cars, why join an owner's group? Why be a part of a group just to literally hate on every post? I just don't see a point, just take yourselves out. There's no need. Um, car communities have gone downhill massively in recent years and it's not just myself that's made comments on this. Like Leadfoot Ash made a video um, on the car community and how it's changed over recent years and how it upsets him to see that it's, you know, it's changed. And I'm 100% in agreement and I know others are massively in agreement with the way the car community is headed uh, just because it's turned into this competition, like this slagging match that unless you're bantering or you know making snide remarks at each other then it's not a car group and I just don't understand it. Um, I think the car community is a lot bigger than that and it's going to take a lot more than just a few people making videos, it's going to take people to actually police it and it's hard because you get called names for policing it um, but I just really hope that the car community eventually finds its feet again because it's disheartening so many people. But yeah, let me know what you uh, you guys have done to your cars that are kind of Marmite modifications. I want to know. I just wanted to show you how mad this looks. Um, obviously, it's not wired in yet. I've just got it plugged into the mains adapter. But I'm using the light from this to actually help me wire it, like, feed these in. But it's... <laughs> It's a very, very big job. You've got to have a hell of a lot of patience to do this amount of wires. But we're getting there slowly. So I managed to get the roof liner back in. Um, everything, all the grab handles are back on and that. I've just got to put that one uh, sun visor back on. You can see me just hiding in the mirror. But I've left them cut long just to get, so I can actually drive the car tomorrow. But this has all got to be wired up tomorrow. Um, and they've all got to be trimmed down to this length that's one that's been done there but as you can see by this uh, it's gonna look pretty good I'm really impressed with it so far right so it's another day um, as you can see there's loads of little tiny dots that will eventually sort of push in a little bit and flatten out if I rub them they kind of go away a little bit um, but this is a mark that I need to get rid of that's very annoying um, but yeah, they are all, pardon me, all in. They are all in. Now I need to wire this in, uh, which I wanted to mount down here. So I've, I've taken the lower trim off. I'm actually going to mount it in the back of here. Um, but what I've done is I've drilled two holes. I'll just put a little picture on the side here of what I've done. But I've drilled two holes in and then tapped the threads. Um, and that's obviously allowed me to put these two bolts in so that I can neatly mount it, it's not going to move around. Now, you've got to be very careful if you do decide to drill it. I took it apart and took the internals out so that it didn't damage anything, because I didn't want to ruin the electronics. So I'm going to drill two holes just in there, and this will sit just behind here somewhere. Um, there's plenty of room. In fact, yeah, it's near enough lining up with that one, so I could just put another hole there, and it should be okay. So, that's all connected now, the grub screw is tightened up on the back here, so that's nice and tight, it's not going to come loose. Now just to stop any vibration, because I don't want it to make noise, I'm going to just put some double sided tape, and this is a foam double sided tape, just so hopefully this isn't really going to stick or be any of the mounting, because obviously it's got them screws that are in there now, um, and it shouldn't really need this because it should be bolted pretty firmly, but I just don't want any noise or vibration coming from this when I drive along because the rattles irritate me. So just peel these off, then I can place it in and do up the, the uh, Allen key bolts, and it should be ready to go. So that's now all ready. I can just neatly place this in. You can see the two holes that are there. Place this in the back. And put a bolt through. And then another one here. I mean, 
these don't need to be too, too tight, but because they're only going to hold it in place. As you can see that's not going to move and that's pretty firmly in there so I'm happy with how that's mounted now the only thing left to do really is wire it up to a switch and um, it's ready to go right guys so the final piece of this long puzzle is to wire in this uh, power wire which I'm going to run down the carpets under here and I'm going to run it to this little switch so it's not on all the time and this here is the, um, the cable that if you reach your hand up the side of this tri trim pillar hang on I'll go around the other side yeah this cable here um, is actually the plug that is on the back of the cigarette lighter and you can just pull this away and get your hand up and just squeeze the little connector in on the top and pull it out and that will allow you to get that and I'm going to use that as my 12 volt source which I'm just going to tap onto the wires I'm literally going to sand a bit of the sand sand a bit of the paint down on here and use this bolt what I put in as my earth and that should be a solid earth connection so I'm just going to wire that in and then the next step will be just showing you it working hopefully <laughs> 